Happiness. And I'm really honored to have with me today Dr. Paula Fujiwara, who is Scientific Director at the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease. Uh, welcome, Paula. Thank you for having me. And today is also, it happens to be World Lung Day. And the union has been very instrumental as part of the uh, FIRS, uh, Forum of Inter uh, International Respiratory Societies, to bring about and to draw attention to lung health. And uh, Paula, you have been working on lung health and with the union for so long. Uh, can you draw uh, the connect between tobacco and lung health? Well, absolutely. I think that with, with tobacco, it is the cause of so many lung diseases. Mm -hmm. And people maybe so, don't even realize that there's a connection with the communicable disease of tuberculosis. Yes. Yes. So I, I think that, that uh, the fact that tobacco in and of itself, I mean, it, it, it's I mean, something that you don't want to, to do. It causes addiction, et cetera. But the thing is, it's so related to the co, uh, chronic obstructive lung disease, uh, and other and other uh, uh, other diseases is, is really you know it causes different kinds of cancer. It's not just lung cancer, but it's linked to bladder cancer, other other kind of cancers. So I think that it's it's very important that we look at the the whole issue of tobacco as the starting point for and all the links that it has with all these other other diseases. And it's a very very mo modifiable risk factor. To talk Absolutely, to yes. it's yes. modifiable. If you don't yes. smoke, yes. you don't you don't uh, have the risk. That's your personal risk. Right. But also, we have to also consider the issue of secondhand smoke. Mm -hmm. So when we don't smoke, we also protect others, mm -hmm. and that's where it's important that we have uh, the, the the mechanisms in place. For example, to have a an, an environment that's smoke free, that we have uh, the uh, plain packaging on tobacco, so that we reduce. And the whole, also the issue of making insure, ensuring that the taxes are high, so that because we know that with increased taxation, that is what is to help. The, the, you know, it's an economic issue, and so people don't want to spend their money on something that's uh, that costs a lot. That costs a lot for them. Mm -hmm. So basically, by controlling tobacco use, uh, I think we can um, tackle a lot many comorbidities which are associated with it, which you mentioned just now. Yes, so. I mean, I think that one thing. I mean, I've got, I come from the tuberculosis world. Yes, yes. And uh, we need to understand that this link between tuberculosis yes. and tobacco yes. is is also very important. And the thing is that the part, part of this conference that we're attending now is also dealing with non-communicable diseases. Yes. So we're, here's tuberculosis, which is a communicable disease, and we're talking about tobacco, which causes a lot of non-communicable mm -hmm. diseases, but to, TB is also related to diabetes. Yes. And, that, and, and I think that the challenge here, what's really important is that we know that in the areas of the world where there's a lot of tuberculosis, there's also a lot of tobacco use, and there's also a lot of diabetes. Mm -hmm. So what we have now is, is in a situation where you're adding fuel to the fire of each, one of each one of these. And I think that by integrating the care of all of these, that's what's so important. And I think what's, what, I, what I am heartened by is just, just two days ago at the UN uh, high-level meeting on, uh, at the, on the General Assembly, which is universal health coverage. So what does that mean? It means that we want everyone to get good coverage, mm -hmm. and that means that you have to integrate the care, because if you keep doing it in silos, yes. then, that, then that's, not, that's not the way to go. Yeah, so could you elaborate <coughs> a little more on breaking the silos? And the, 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 si the, the challenge, oh, I mean, I, speaking from my experience in tuberculosis, that's mm -hmm. always been kind of something that's separate. And what that's done is that people say, well, that's not my responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I think that what's important that we break down the silos so that everyone thinks that your my health problem here and this health problem here and this these can all pertain to me i'm one person and i have these other all these other issues so make sure that i take care of all of them and not just oh i'm only i'm only uh, worried about the tuberculosis here you go somewhere else for your hiv you go somewhere else for your diabetes that's not the way to do i think it's important that a person uh, any person has the right to have all of his or her medical attention in one place. Hmm. So uh, how do you think platforms like uh, APCAT, that is the Asia Pacific Cities Alliance for Tobacco Control, as well as prevention of non-communicable diseases, but here we are bringing in communicable diseases also. How can such platforms and local action help in breaking the silos and 
I have been very impressed by uh, attending this uh, APCAT mm -hmm. conference because this is an alliance of mayors. This is an alliance at the local level. Mm -hmm. This is an alliance of really taking the power that a mayor has in, the, in this context to really impact his or her community. And what I've seen here is it goes even to the next level. It involves the actual community. So the, the mayor of a city has the ability to mobilize the, <coughs> excuse me, mobilize the community. Where is it with the federal level? I think that the federal level of any country has the, sets the norms, uh, says, you know, this is what we have to do. But it's the implementation that has to happen at the local level. <coughs> and I think that's where, um, that's where the, the value of doing it from a bottom-up approach. I would say that learning, what I've learned today just from the tobacco is that I think in tuberculosis we have to do more of the same. Mm -hmm. And I think we're not, we're not at the same level because I think in, in tobacco it's easier, you have a common enemy. You have, yeah. you know, it's the tobacco companies, it's the use of tobacco, and so I, I think for people that's easy, it's an easier thing to understand. But with tuberculosis I think that the, sometimes the community, the activists say, no, I want to deal with this. I want to deal with this part of tuberculosis. I want to deal with this other part of tuberculosis, MDR TB or child TB or, or whatever. And I think that that makes it difficult for all to really unite, unite. behind mm -hmm. a common uh, enemy, so mm -hmm. to speak, mm -hmm. uh, which is, in that case, tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. But I think the tobacco community uh, is really kind of mobilized because they know who their enemy is. And by mobilizing, my, my focusing on tobacco control would not only in the indirectly but directly also uh, impact uh, tuberculosis and so many other diseases. Yes, because I think get, get, because because yes. of the relationship between yes. between diseases, yes. I, I think that this is where, so for example, if the tobacco community is talking, is talking, they can also bring in the message about tuberculosis. Yes. They can bring in the message yes. about diabetes. Uh, I noticed that some of the presentations today, they were looking at uh, the use, uh, you know, tobacco and also uh, soft drinks. Yes. So they were already mm -hmm. making that link between mm -hmm. sugar, mm -hmm. sugar mm -hmm. and, and yes. uh, tobacco. So yes. I think any time that we can do that, mm -hmm. it, it, it's important and it makes, it makes people understand in the community that mm -hmm. all our health is linked by very many things. Uh, Paula, the, un the 50th Union World Lung Health Conference is, is very near. So would you like to share something about that? I think that the fact that we're having it in India, mm -hmm. in this case in Hyderabad, is so important because India has 27% of all of the people with tuberculosis that we've identified. So it's an important message that we're bringing that, we're bringing that we think India is, is important. I think one of the key um, scientific things that we're really excited about mm -hmm. is the vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the GSK announced last year that they had a new vaccine. Their new data mm -hmm. that we're going to be <clears throat> going to be sharing. Mm -hmm. But I think that if we're going to end tuberculosis, we're really going to have to have a vaccine. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, there have been many more abstracts this year is about prevention. Mm -hmm. And again, I think the world, uh, the TB world, is now waking up to the fact that oh. Yes, we have all these people with tuberculosis, mm -hmm. but there's all these people that are infected that are silently living mm -hmm. with the tuberculosis germ in their body. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do about that? So we've always said, okay, people with HIV, they're at risk, you know, children under five, this is a priority. But I think now we're going to have an expansion of the use of a preventive therapy, and this is a prime moment because before we only had one drug, isoniazid. Right. Right. Now, now we have some regimens, and I think the word regimen is important because it means a, a few using a couple of drugs together, mm -hmm. and we can now get it down to three months, mm -hmm. we can get it down to one month, mm -hmm. and I think the time is really, it's right because that, now we can really um, give the medication because no one, when you have, when it's prevention, no one wants to take medications for a long right, time. Right, exactly. So when you can get it down to three months, mm -hmm. even that's long. If you can get down to one month, and that's then that's mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, this is the time. This is the proper time to actually concentrate on prevention because we know that one quarter of the world's population is infected with tuberculosis, and we don't want them to to come down with the active form of the disease. And that again is related to the tobacco. That's related to the diabetes because these are things that increase the risk factor for tuberculosis. So I think that uh, at Hyderabad, there's going to be we're we're looking into as I say the vaccine issue, the prevention issue. We're going to have a, a CEO roundtable mm -hmm. to to kind of sensitize again, move beyond just the science. The 
the scientists. Science. But having said that, we're also going to have TB Science. Mm -hmm. And this is the uh, two-day conference before the meeting, and we're going to look at some of the basic and translational science because I think uh, we haven't had a venue uh, for that in the TB world, but now mm -hmm. uh, and the, the interest in that aspect is, this is the second time we're doing it, mm -hmm. and the interest mm -hmm. is really, really high. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a little peek into the <laughs> Union Conference. And just uh, your message for uh, this fourth summit of uh, APCAT and the way forward. Of course, concentrating on tobacco control alone will, will give us so many other gains. So just your take on that. I think, I think what I've learned here at this, at this meeting is that, okay, it, we're talking about tobacco, but the thing is that it's a social movement. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's so. That's what I've been very impressed with seeing the presentations by the mayors of these individual cities and how they mobilize their communities to actually do the fight. And it's not like uh, it's an, not an us versus them. You know, yes, we have our citizens here, but we're the authorities. No, it's like they're working all together. And that's. I think that's been one of the most impressive things I've seen at this meeting. Okay. Thank you, Paula. We were in conversation with Dr. Paula Fujiara of the union and thank you for being here with us at the fourth summit of APCAT. Thank you very much.